because the one seeds in both conference are locked up right yeah. now. And I actually didn't think that we'd be able to say that in both of the conferences, but it just fell that way. And they were a couple of dominant performances, none more so than the Baltimore Ravens. What? Let's start there. The Baltimore Ravens have the one seed. They're 13-3. and three. They not only beat the Dolphins, they destroyed them. Shellacked them. 56-19. to 19. They got the number one seed for the second time in franchise history. They've got a six-game winning streak now. Uh, this was one of those games where, what was it, two weeks ago, you and I came to the conclusion that the Miami Dolphins were the team to beat in the AFC. Right. And I think that we were wrong. Yeah, it looks like we're wrong. I mean, it's hard to think of a team that's going to go deep playoff run. I don't remember ever this many high seeds in the playoffs losing the way they've been losing in December, right? That's a good point. That's where it's it's odd. Usually, like, the top two or three teams in each conference, even if they lose in December, it's like they barely lose. We've seen some games here as of lately where, you know, yeah, right now, like you're talking about the Cowboys or the Dolphins or whoever else, where we go, oh, my gosh, they've lost like that right now? I mean, it's rare to see. Um, The Ravens have hit their stride. The Ravens, as we kind of talked about a little bit last week, seem to play better when they're in fear of their opponent, right? We've kind of mm. made that point, whether it was the Niners, the Lions, when they were hot, right? The Seahawks scared them. Of course, the Dolphins scared them. The Dolphins were a team last year that the Ravens were up 35-14. to 14. What, late third quarter, early fourth, and lost the football game. Ravens absolutely stomped them today. The Ravens are a different football team than we've ever seen the Lamar Jackson, John Harbaugh Ravens look like. I think that's the biggest thing that I come away with after the last few weeks is that – you know, we know they're big and physical. We know the defense off awesome. You heard me say it in Football Night in America a little bit. This is the first year, though, they're going to go into the playoffs with Lamar Jackson and be a pass-first football team and then go, wait, if you overplay the pass, we have this huge offensive lineman and we can run on you too. But that is different about them, and it was an offensive show today. I don't know where else to say it. I mean, it never felt like, you know, I'm looking here in my notes, and really from the get-go I was like, Lamar's on fire. He's throwing the ball great. The passing game's killing it, right? I mean, we even had Rashad Bateman drop that bomb on the it was the first play of the game, right? So uh, Lamar, the passing game, phenomenal, right? He had time in the pocket. He made all the appropriate throws. And then the defense, a little at first, was getting beat by some of those slants you heard me talking about to the left, right? They kept kind of put a guy short, run, run a little post route behind it. And that would kind of seem like, whoa, okay, they're breaking off a few runs, the Dolphins, and they've kind of found this little scheme that's working. But the Ravens are so well coached, they kind of caught on to it. And I think that was Tua's first interception. They went back to the well one more time. Roquan Smith got the interception. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of where you felt like the game started to fall apart for the Dolphins. It was the one play, 70 play, 75 yard touchdown pass to Zay Flowers, which was a Tyree Kill type of play, which I love, right? Off the motion, run up field. It confuses people because it's like, whoa, what's happening so fast? Wait, you got him, I got him. Are we in zone? Are we in man? He goes uncovered. And then the next drive was the two interception that led to, I think, the fourth and seven go for it Isaiah Likely catch, right? That was one handed. And then that was pretty much all she wrote. Ravens went up 28-13, to 13 and you felt like – it felt like the, the Dolphins never had a chance after that. So that play, right, I'm glad you brought right. that play up because oftentimes on this podcast we do bring up the fourth down plays that don't work. But yeah. I do think that one – and that was quite aggressive, right? It I was. mean, they were up at the time. They felt in control, obviously. Yes, they did. But it was fourth and seven. They could have kicked a long field goal. You got the best – Field goal kicker, maybe Probably in the history. Probably like a 53, 54 yeah. yard struggled field goal. Struggled a little right? bit on those 50 yards yeah, this year, right. but um, but still, they definitely could have tried it. Because I feel like that play broke the Dolphins. Like after that play, this game was basically over. It doesn't didn't seem like the Dolphins did anything after that. You're right. They they go into the half with the lead, then they come out in the second half, right? And Baltimore, um, Baltimore has the huge kick return. And that was where you were like, oh, my gosh, like the D- Miami Dolphin defense isn't going to get to make a stop here and, and, you know, hold them to no points. They got the ball. I think he returned it back all the way to like the 18-yard line. A few plays later, they scored a touchdown. And then you were like, wow, it's 35-13, right? And it kind of became a little bit of like, oh, a stalemate for a minute. And you're like, oh, the Dolphins going to, you know, mount a comeback like they did last year because it was 35-14. I think you heard me in the room going, oh, they scored a touchdown, but it was work to go down to make it 35-19. But it just didn't matter. I mean, the Dolphins had all the answers throughout the day throwing the ball. They even started to run the ball a little bit at that point. Uh, the Ravens, excuse Ravens, me. Yeah. And uh, the Ravens, yeah, right now, hitting their stride. Playing as good on both sides of the ball as we've seen them play all year. We saw that little inkling in the middle of the year where we went, 
hey, when the Ravens are at their best, they look like the 49ers and kind of went away. But here they are. They've regained it just in the right time, and they're, they're looking awesome right yeah, the, now. The two one seeds, the 49ers and the Ravens, have looked the most dominant the most times this year. Agreed. Like, really. Agreed it's just like ten games against good teams. Right. It's like, wow, yes. they are the best team in their conference. Yes. So Tyreek Hill, yep. 248 yards from breaking Kelvin Johnson's NFL record. Yep. He's the first player in NFL history with 1,700 receiving yards in multiple seasons, though. He was your MVP guy yeah. for a long time. Yeah. But now I think oh, yeah, it's it over. is now Lamar's. Right. Coach Mills says, damn okay, La MVP, perfect <laughs> passer rating, five touchdowns, put a stamp on the MVP race, looking awfully quarterbacky out there. Yeah, that's the great way to put it, Coach Mills. It's quarterbacky. You know, even you heard me talking about the fourth and seven play to Isaiah Likely. He kind of runs up in the pocket and – I feel like, again, old Lamar would have been like, oh, no, there's people here. I just got to tuck it and run. Go, go, gadget legs. Let's see if I can get it. He's still running up in the pocket, looking upfield, jumps because he's got somebody kind of coming at him and throws an unbelievable football to Isaiah Likely. Javon Holland was not in a bad spot there, and he puts it in a spot where it was safe. Like, Likely he's going to get it or no one's going to get it. They get the touchdown there. But, yeah, Lamar, I think, solidified the MVP today, definitely. You know, I think with the way the Ravens have been, right, putting more on his shoulders. And then, again, I don't think you could just look at overall statistics when it comes to Lamar Jackson, right? It's the effect he has in the football game. It's the plays he makes in big moments. Uh, you know, they, 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 he, he is everything the Ravens embody. Yep. And uh, great job by them. And way to go, Jim, John Harbaugh and, and the whole organization. So, Pete, do we have the locker room celebration for the Ravens in there? John Harbaugh was going crazy. And, I mean, what a – what a coaching year! He's not going to win coach of the. He's not going to win coach of the year. No. Um, but like, talk about we, we we have Bill Belichick in the conversation of who's the best coach in the in the NFL. There he is. Look <laughs> I at mean, him. look at those look, moves. He's right? he's like, that's he's good. Got, oh, oh, okay. He's got some. Oh, I like it. He's got some moves right there. Hip flexibility. Now he gets into the white man. I'm just going to throw my arms in the air. It. I don't know what I'm going to do. He can only sustain. For he like can three only seconds. sustain the soul for a little while. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, he but lost he had it. it going, and uh, they're a fun team. They got a lot of personalities. They're physical. They're fast. And uh, they're really well coached on both sides of the football. They got leaders. And, of course, they got a really, really special quarterback who looks like he's going to win his second MVP. And at Still Hines, I'm sorry. Uh -oh. This is a tweet from many moons ago. This was preseason when you picked the Ravens. Right, right. To be the one seed. Yes. This picked was in the preseason. I'm an idiot for and doing we remember, that. We remember. We remember this. Pete remembers as well. This tweet to you. Goes, I will literally shave all my hair off if the Ravens finish with the one seed. Get yes. real. And I noticed today you and Pete retweeted this today just so people could t take a look at this. Yes, we did. We were, we, you know, hey, at Wizzy, okay. and Or no, sorry, at Still Hines. At sorry. Still Hines. Yeah, I mean, at Wizzy, at C Sims QB, at SNFL and NBC. <laughs> we know you. We've got you. <laughs> so if you do decide to shave your hair, which, I mean, you're a man of your word, and you want to come at me with the get real thing, let's see if you can be real and be a man of your word. All right, And if you do, because this is all in good fun and we appreciate you listening to the pod and your interaction, please like take a picture, film it, something, because we're going <laughs> to yeah. put it on the pod. We're going to have some fun with you there. And you did say all of your hair, too, which means all of your hair, yeah. not even just your head. <laughs> right, and technically, technically, that is what that You're means. You're pushing it too far. I'm pushing it too far. Now it's gotten weird. Uh, the Dolphins. One thing, real quick about them. Yeah, Xavier Howard oh, left. We Tua to that. left. Bradley Chubb looks like that's a season Bradley ending injury. Bradley Chubb did not look good for Bradley Chubb. Yeah. Um, injuries piling up for the Dolphins a little bit. Yo, yo, what up, homies? Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to Chris Sims on Button. Right now, we got Sunday pod, right? So you can have it Monday morning. We recap all the action. Wednesday, it's the what the. F happen podcast we're gonna get deep in the weeds on the key matchups of the week and then thursday i'm picking games with that jerk florio so you know where to find us homies keep watching peace out we'll see you